concerning new report accusing President Obama's CIA of curating the 2016 Russia collusion hoax by asking foreign intelligence agencies to illegally spy on the mm. Trump campaign. Lucas Tomlinson in Washington with more. Lucas. Good early morning, Carly and Todd. This report from Substack citing multiple unnamed sources claims the U.S. intelligence community asked foreign spy agencies to help spy on more than two dozen associates of Donald Trump in the run up to the 2016 election. It reads in part, quote, President Barack Obama's CIA director, John Brennan, had identified 26 Trump associates for the Five Eyes to target. A source confirmed that the IC had identified them as people to bump or make contact with or manipulate. They were targets of our own IC and law enforcement, targets for collection and misinformation. Now, the Five Eyes nations are the U.S., U.K., Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Here's one of the reporters, Michael Schellenberger, who spoke to Jesse Waters last night. If this binder contains what we have been told that it contains, which may include raw intelligence, information showing that the U.S. government, the CIA and the intelligence community of the U.S. government, initiated the Russia collusion hoax, that it did not occur in the way that the official story, including the Durham investigation, had portrayed it, then that's extremely serious information. The report was released at the same time House conservatives are preparing a bill that would reauthorize Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act that allows the government to collect communications from foreigners abroad. And today, the House Rules Committee is set to... Uh oh Guess what day it is? Oh, excuse me, ladies, coming through. <laughs> guess what day? Like Ooh, popcorn! Uh, hey, guess what? Popcorn! What day is it? What's today? What? What, do I have popcorn in my teeth? Hey, Mike! Mike, 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 guess what day it is? Oh, is that your mom, man? Oh, movies with your mom, I dig it, dude, that's nice. Impeachment day! Woo -hoo. Yeah! Give it up! <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it is a great day when we have impeached Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, a traitor to our nation, but that's not even the most traitorous thing that happened. We are exposing the liars and we are exposing the scum that hate you and that hate this country today on the program. And we're going to do a deep dive, a very dark and uncomfortable, painful, but true dive on the people who really do truly hate this place. And they have a lot of power and it's worth exposing them. And it's worth spending the show on it, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're going to do today, Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. Bombshell report reveals that the CIA had foreign intelligence agencies illegally target and spy on Donald Trump to create and manufacture the Russia collusion claims. We're This is like something that the CIA does a lot of. And we're going to talk about how evil the CIA is today. We're going to start exposing some very dirty, very disgusting laundry. Hunter's ex-business partner, speaking of <laughs> this disgusting laundry, don't ever go through Hunter Biden's underwear drawer. Hunter's ex-business partner, Tony Bobolinsky, testifies that Joe Biden was the enabler of the foreign deals with China and that Joe was the big guy. Again, there are so many great stories that are happening simultaneously, along with Alejandro Mayorkas' impeachment in the House. Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna, joins the show. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. Gonna need a lot of uh, energy to get through this one. That is why we have our energy handy with our Brigade Cup right here. The official shell. This is made out of tank shells. Did you know that? I don't actually know if that's true, but I'm gonna say it. <laughs> made out of tank shells, and inside is the delicious, sweet, black caffeinated juice. All natural from our friends at Blackout Coffee. Blackout Coffee keeps us rolling, keeps us rolling onto the battlefield to fight the communists. It is what we do on this program, and you got to have the energy. These communists, whew, man, do they ever have time? They're a godless lot, and they are a godless people, and they don't have families. And so all they have to do in life is to sit and plot and scheme. It's going to be actually a theme of the show today. And so these schemers and these plotters, well... You got to have the energy of people with families and with things to live for and with faith and with religion. We have to have the energy and the time to actually fight back. So make sure that you're getting blackout coffee into your veins. Blackoutcoffee.com slash Benny. Use the coupon code Benny for 20% off your first order. Check the gear section while you're there. Blackoutcoffee.com slash Benny. Stay awake, not woke. Okay, baby. We're awake this morning. And we're going to be awake to something that is 
an ongoing practice, something that Dwight Eisenhower called one of the scariest black boxes inside of our government. Dwight Eisenhower was the commanding general during World War II. And when he became president, he started to see that enormous amounts of money was being siphoned away from the taxpayers and put into the black box of American intelligence. The American intelligence agencies after World War II in the sort of reconstruction of the new world order, which is what they call it in their own documentation, decided to make themselves kings of the earth, decided to use the hegemony of American power to create black boxes, which of course you can't find them in the constitution, but they create a world of darkness where we have no insight into how the money's being spent, no American official, no elected representative, no president even can touch the money, can look into the actual machinations of this group of intelligence operatives who are dead set on one thing, retention of power, lack of oversight, true actual power in this country is being able to tell the president what to do. True actual power. Who's the most powerful man in the world? Well, the president of the United States. So if you control the president of the United States, if he's scared of you, well, that makes you the most powerful person on earth. And over the course of the last 70 years, our intel agencies have set about creating a octopus like tentacle web that can really pluck at the strings and terrify even those who are rightfully elected representatives of these the United States. People that have Article One constitutional power. Article One, first for a reason, should have oversight over everything in our federal government, our Congress, and these people are scared shitless of these people. They come on our show to talk about it. Members of Congress come on our show to say, I am terrified of waking up in a bed and there's like a naked woman next to me and I've been set up. I am terrified of being set up by our intel agencies. Members of Congress has come forward saying they've been honeypotted by our own intelligence agencies. On this program, making international news. If you control the powerful people, then you're in control. It's a pretty simple equation. And so our intelligence agencies have been going about the truly maniacal, I mean, you have to, you have to attribute you either in life when something bad happens, you have to attribute either ignorance or malevolence. Okay. So either the person's so dumb that they're doing something that hurts you and they don't even know it's flowers for Algernon, right? Like squeeze the mouse, like going to hit, hit you with the hammer. Like you're just too stupid to understand you're doing something bad or you're malevolent. You actually know you're doing something bad and you don't give an F you don't give a rip because it means you remain powerful. Like the FBI, for instance, writing MLK suicide notes. Okay. That's something that the FBI did. They admit to it. You can go find it in their archives. Did you know that? Is that something that's taught in school that the FBI was trying to get MLK to kill himself? Cause they, they literally were, and you can go read the suicide notes. They're available for everyone to read. That's just one of, of course, many, many things that our Intel agencies do our four letter agencies do inside of their black box that we don't have inside or oversight of. This is a ultra, this is like a outside of the constitution realm of operation for our federal government. It's completely and totally illegal based on our founding and based on how this government was supposed to be designed. There is no justification for it. And of course, what's going to happen is, well, absolute power will be corrupted. Absolutely. Right. As the old John Locke statement goes. And so I'd like to fast forward to something that happened quite recently, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to fast forward to something that happened that has nothing to do with Donald Trump because I'd like to actually remove Trump from this equation. We're going to talk about how Barack Obama and John Brennan uh, were ordered, John Brennan was himself, ordered to spy on Donald Trump by Barack Obama. But I want to go back before Barack Obama was even in the Senate. I want to go back when Donald Trump didn't even have the Apprentice show yet. Donald Trump was still doing cameos in Little Rascals, right? Home Alone 2. Into a um, maybe simpler time? Maybe not. The year's 1999. Ladies and gentlemen, our own government in 1999, and by government, I'm talking our own CIA, wor worked 
within the confines of the CIA's charter, which is to not run intel operations on Americans domestically, the CIA is supposed to be a purely clandestine organization that operates overseas, right? Outside of the American borders. This is, interestingly enough, exactly why the CIA was so perfect for Jeffrey Epstein. That's why Epstein had to have his little island just off the shores of America. The CIA can do operations there. The CIA could gra gather intel on Little St. James. How did Jeffrey Epstein get all those millions and billions of dollars? Oh, really? It's a curious question. Maybe that's why the black box exists around the CIA and no one can penetrate it. Maybe that's why. You ever ask yourself that question? Anyway, that's not what this show's about. This show is about how the CIA inadvertently created the literal conditions for September 11th and how they covered it up. I wanna talk about that for just a second before we get to our main story because I need to set the table here for how this all happened and how the CIA operates and how culpable they are for some of the greatest horrors that have been visited upon the American people. I mean, we don't even have to bring up Kennedy getting assassinated, but we should. Tucker Carlson having CIA whistleblowers coming on his show saying that, yeah, the CIA was totally involved in Kennedy's assassination. Kennedy was planning on shutting down the CIA because he's like, what the F? I can't look at where you're spending your money, says World War II veteran and hero John Kennedy. You think that you're above the executive and you serve me? Oh, yeah, we'll scatter you like a thousand pieces to the winds, John Kennedy says about the CIA. And lo and behold, John Kennedy, well... Let's just say he needed to do oversight of the CIA like he needed a hole in the head, right? And what do you know? That problem was solved. What's the point? We don't even have to go into ancient history. Let's go. I, I wasn't alive during the Kennedy assassination, which was absolutely a conspiracy. A conspiracy by government actors. Not even the, even the Secret Service agents are now coming out and saying that. Amazing how this stuff gets covered up. Even the Secret Service agents for Kennedy are like old, they're in their 90s, and they're saying, yeah, yeah, there were multiple shooters, it's a conspiracy. I digress. Here's the report, ladies and gentlemen, from our own government. How could the CIA have been involved in 9-11? Well, according to this report, I encourage you to read it. Let's put up the actual government report. It is here on your screen. Please, I beg of you, Go and read it. We'll put it in the show notes. We'll link it in the description. Go and read it. This report by Donald Castriano interviewing various members of the FBI, CIA, and Guantanamo Bay prisoners, the guys who planned September 11th. He concludes in this massive report that has been released without any redactions that according to his extensive communications, with everyone inside of these agencies, whistleblowers, key people, inside all these agencies, before 9-11, during 9-11, and after 9-11, his report finds that the CIA quite literally worked with other intelligence agencies, the Saudis specifically, to bring in the hijackers into our country to welcome them here to take the 9-11 hijackers that they knew were terrorists, they literally targeted the terrorists to bring them into the country. Oh, does that scare the, does that scare the hell out of you? When you think about what's happening at our border? Do you, do you know that these terrorists were here illegally also? Goodness gracious. How stupid are we as a nation? Our own government, this report's been declassified, our own government investigator found that the pilots, the terrorists that executed 9-11 were brought here by the CIA in coordination with the Saudis for, again, ignorance or malevolence. Which one is it? Did they do it because they wanted to spy on the terrorists and like find out how their network worked and they thought it'd be really neat to have them stateside? Well, then they're 
they're functionally have lower brain cognitive capacity than Joe Biden does, if that's what they thought. Or was it malevolent? I Who knows? The report doesn't go into the lower, like the deeper moral functionings of this. But what the report states, let's just put it up one more time. What the report states unequivocally is that FBI officials suppressed the information that the CIA brought in with the help of the Saudis, the actual 9-11 hijackers. How the hell did they get here? How did they get flight training? How were these guys who weren't American citizens didn't have documentation able to go go, go to pilot school? You ever wonder about that? How did Jeff Ramsey get all of his money? Don't ask too many questions. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Yeah. Remember the Hunter Biden laptops, Russian disinformation. The CIA told us so. <laughs> okay. So what does this establish? This establish establishes that these agencies see themselves as gods. They see themselves as outside of the boundaries of the Constitution, outside of the functionings of our constitutional republic, and that they can operate with total impunity regardless of who gets hurt or who gets destroyed. Okay? That is a fact pattern that is evident with the CIA. And I haven't even mentioned the name Trump, okay? I'm doing this based on the government's documentations about their own actions and culpability on 9-11. And I haven't even mentioned Donald Trump, okay? So now let's get into it, okay? And before, before we do, I mean, I think it's worth noting that this whole Saudi government thing, like this isn't cuckoo stuff anymore. This is mainstream stuff. This is stuff that's been discussed, talked about on corporate media airwaves. This is stuff that's been brought up by Republican candidates for president. These are mainstream ideas that are based on facts, facts that are delivered to us by our own government that we paid for. Okay? An example. Here you go. 9-11, inside job or uh, exactly what the government tells us? I don't believe the government has told us the truth. Again, I'm driven by evidence and data. What I've seen in the last several years is we have to be skeptical of what the government does tell us. I haven't seen evidence to the contrary, but do I believe everything the government told us about it? Absolutely not. Do I have two questions. The 9-11 Commission? Absolutely not. I mean, Vic, I think people look at those comments. They look at what you said in the Atlantic, which you say you were misquoted. They look at comments that you've made about the Federal Reserve adding zeros to media companies' bank accounts. And, I mean, it looks like you're floating conspiracy theories with this defense of I'm just asking questions. Well, when you actually quote me, those are my words and I stand by them. So somebody else quoting me, putting words in my mouth, I have a problem with. But those words I stand by. You want to know why? Because we literally know the FBI, the 9-11 Commission, the U.S. government on down told us specifically that Saudi Arabia had no involvement. 20 plus years later, quietly declassifying documents showing that not only did Saudi Arabia have involvement, it was a Saudi intelligence agent that received two of those terrorists that cl- crashed planes on 9-11, killing but the Americans question was, is 9-11 on American an soil. Inside job and, and you didn't say about. no. <laughs> always tell, you can always tell when a Operation Contel Pro or Operation Mockingbird agent, when somebody who's being run by... The intel the intel agencies hears too much truth, they'll they'll interrupt, right? Kate Land Collins there on CNN doing a master class and just saying, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Talking over Vivek when he's making his point. I mean, this is actually a great tactic. When somebody's about when somebody's saying the truth, which Vivek just said, that our own government admits that they were that the CIA was working with the Saudis in order to bring the hijackers to America. She goes, like that, it's amazing. Vivek continued, ladies and gentlemen, this is a lawsuit, of course, by the victims of 9-11, these families that are destroyed. Maybe you know somebody who served on 9-11. Maybe you know somebody who lost a family member on 9-11. I certainly do. Do you? Do you know a cop or a firefighter or somebody who was in the World Trade Center? God forbid. There were 3,000 Americans that were slaughtered on that day, 
and then many afterward who succumbed to horrible cancers uh, or deaths because they were told that the asbestos, like that the the, the, <laughs> the asbestos, the pure asbestos that they were sucking into their lungs from the collapse of the towers, that that was just totally fine, that they were good. Incredible. I mean, truly, truly malevolent. I mean, that's true malevolence. Those families are suing the government saying that they've lied about the Saudi Arabia involvement now and continue to lie about it, our federal government. Watch. But that Saudi Arabia absolutely was involved and our government for 20 years lied to the American people about there it. There was an entire 9-11 commission fact, report actually. on this. Yes, and it will, and it lied, and it was false. And in fact, you know where that's coming out, Caitlin? There's now a case, a federal case in the Southern District of New York, where the government of Saudi Arabia is being sued by victims of families. Know, that's families. why this is yes. resurfacing itself. It is relevant, and it turns but there's out there's a difference in, in asking questions about Saudi Arabia's involvement and the government's involvement, and then pushing this idea that whenever what your comment about who was on the plane and then was 9/11 an inside job where you did not say no earlier? That's why. So don't ever talk about the actual facts. Go in immediately to the smear, smearing Vivek Ramaswamy, smearing him as, 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 with a slur, right? Conspiracy theorists, conspiracy theorists. It's in the government documents. Last time, Rolls Royce, last time. Put up the government report. Dudes, if you want to actually have it out, let's put up the report. There it is. Signed by Donald Castriano himself, the lead investigator for our government on the 9-11 commission with a special pedigree and a special charge to look into the causes of September 11th, found that the CIA is the cause of the September 11th. It is breathtaking. This document from our government. So call it whatever you want. Use whatever smear you wish. But I want to establish a fact pattern here that the CIA does work with foreign governments in order to do illegal activities on our soil. Those terrorists should have never been in this country and the CIA operationally should have never been allowed to bring them here, but they did it anyway. They didn't give a damn. Didn't care about you. They never apologized for it as they clothe and robe themselves in patriotism. The opposite is in fact true. Many of these people hate this country. They hate you. They hate the fact that you send people like Donald Trump to go be their boss and to go piss in their punch bowl, proverbially. And so they create actual lies about where Donald Trump pees. I guess to be like particularly grotesque about it, I'm talking about the Russia collusion lie, the entire dossier, the PP dossier, as it's called, as it's been known, because it had such gratuitous um, hysterical, if you're looking at it from a comedy perspective, lies about Donald Trump and what he did in Russia. They created an entire document. And now we know that the predicate for all of that was the CIA being told by their true Lord and taskmaster, because they aligned politically, finally, Barack Obama, Barack Obama equally wishing to bring about sort of a Marxist totalitarianism in America. And the CIA would love nothing more than a Marxist totalitarianism in America because that would create the security state that they so desperately desire because that makes them warlords and gods over all of us. It is what they've attempted to create all around the world. They staged a coup in Ukraine in 2014 and we're still cleaning up the mess for that. Amazing how it all spins around the axle of this single evil organization. The history of America changed forever. The true revolutions in our country, the true dangers in our country, a danger from within, not without. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the breaking news from this morning. The breaking news from this morning, here reading to you from the New York Post, but it's all over the place. CIA and foreign intelligence agencies illegally targeted 26 Russian associates before 2016 Russia collusion claims report. Okay. U.S. intelligence community was tasked asked foreign spy agencies. Okay. So that fits the bill, right? The CIA is working with other foreign nations to do illegal activities here in America to surveil 26 associates of Donald Trump in the run-up to the 2016 election, which triggered the allegations that the former president's campaign had been colluding with Russia. The former CIA director, John Brennan, uh, CNN, MSNBC commentator. So a reminder that these, uh, 
news organizations are completely and totally at the service of our intel agencies. They are mouthpieces repeating and being stenographers for the lies of these agencies. In fact, somebody named Natasha Bertrand just was promoted at CNN. You may recall that name because that's the person who wrote that 51 Intel experts say that the Hunter Biden laptop had all the hallmarks of Russian disinformation, had no proof, had no evidence, just had filthy, despicable, rodent-like intelligence agents from our intel agencies signed the letter that was orchestrated by Anthony Blinken, who also just got reward, who was rewarded for lying to the American people. They lied to you and they're getting promotions for it. You, they're getting rewarded for it, okay? Just to show you how this works. So John Brennan, never suffering any consequences, identified and presented the targets of the U.S. intelligence sharing partners to the so-called Five Eyes agencies. These are the intelligence gathering organizations, the U.S., United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, according to a report published Monday on Michael Schellenberger's public stub stack. The report by independent journalists Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi uh, and Alice Gutentag had not been confirmed by the Post. They cite multiple unnamed sources, including one close to House Permanent Select Committee Intelligence uh, led by Rep. Mike Turner. Turner's office did not respond to the Post for comment. The U.S. intelligence community had identified 26 Trump associates as people to bump or make contact with or manipulate. In spy speak, bumping is when the when a reason is manufactured to meet with a target of interest in order to develop a relationship that could lead to intelligence. They were targets of our own intelligence community and law enforcement, targets for collection of and misinformation. Britain's government commissions headquarters intelligence apparatus was making contacts with Trump's associates as early as March 2016. They were making contacts and bumping Trump people going back to 2016, a source told the outlet. They were sending people around the UK, Australia, and Italy in Mossad uh, in Italy. 2000, and M MI16 was working with an intelligence school that they had set up. They were wiretapping, and they were trying to get Donald Trump on the phone through second tier wiretapping. And the way that it works is if you are an intel agent, if you are the source that the intelligence agencies are going after, then any person that you're talking with or any person that you're texting with suddenly gets entrapped inside of sort of the cone of their surveillance of you. So of course the, they were going after all of Donald Trump's. They did this in a kind of clumsy, but also kind of smart way. They went after all these people that were talking with Trump, knowing that Donald Trump was gonna call and text all these people so they could actually spy on Trump which is actually what they were doing. This was an intel operation that was being run in order to service the Hillary Clinton campaign. They were quite literally spying on behalf of the Hillary Clinton campaign. That was the actual function of this. So every time somebody texted Trump or talked with Trump or spoke with the Trump inner circle, they were able to then harvest and gather Donald Trump himself. Intelligence related to the alleged surveillance effort is housed in a 10-inch binder, according to the outlet, which Trump ordered to be declassified at the end of his presidency and could contain evidence that multiple U.S. intelligence officials broke laws, spying, and election interference. My God. The whereabouts of the binder is unknown. The Trump campaign and the CIA did not respond to the request to comment. Do you see, are your eyes open? Do you see why they had to raid Melania's closet? Understand that these people have no interest in Melania's unmentionables. They don't care, okay? They've seen enough cross-dressing. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover uh, used to be their boss, right? Amazing how these people are so obsessed with other people's fetishes when they themselves are such duplicitous despicable creatures go look go look at i mean that's not that's not a slight go look at j edgar hoover go look at like the reporting anyway, go look at the guy's life he was in charge for like 50 years of the fbi and they named a building after him he's the guy who was behind the mlk assassin like mlk suicide letters and they name a building after him got it 
you go study the history of these places, they are just absolutely they should, they really should be scattered to the wind. You really have to start over. There is no reforming these agencies, the CIA, the FBI, all of them. They are also all extra constitutional. None of them have any grounding or mooring in the constitutional formations of this government, nor should they. We've created the kings that we revolted against. We've, we've created them here. And they're far worse than King George. They're actually far more powerful than King George. And we can prove it here, ladies and gentlemen. They can manipulate truth itself. It's a terrifying thing to talk about because we say often on this program that the truth shall set you free, and we believe that. But there is a tactic that has been used in all of this to manipulate what we know to be true as a country. It's called the wrap-up smear. It's important to talk tactics uh, on the battlefield. It's important to talk logistics. Logistics actually gets you to the battlefield. So what is the logistics? The battlefield is obviously the information warfare that we try and fight every single day. The logistics to get people to the battlefield is really important. The logistics here matter. The wrap-up smear is a tactical PR weapon that is used by these agencies and their complicit media organs in order to cover up a crime like this. And how do you do that? It's very explicit. And the rules of engagement are very concrete. Nancy Pelosi actually, in a moment of either sobriety or extreme drunkenness, I'm not sure which, exposed exactly how it works. Now, once again, I want to show you this absent the vacuum of Donald Trump, or actually, correctly, inside of a vacuum, without Trump at all. Because these clips are before Donald Trump. The 9-11 stuff is before Donald Trump burst onto the scene. A decades before, actually. This clip from Nancy Pelosi is before Donald Trump. I want to establish a fact pattern of how these people operate. Nancy Pelosi is a willing and wanton organ of the intel community. How do you think she got so filthy rich? Who do you think picks these stocks? Who do you think puts the money in the account for their, for their servile agents? Nancy Pelosi being one of those agents explained exactly how our intelligence agencies operate their media organs. It's called the wrap-up smear, and the rules are this. When you're guilty of a crime, you accuse someone else you accuse your opponents, Republicans always, of the same crime. Then you make up lies about those Republicans and you merchandise it to the press, which you own. The press repeats it like willing canaries, like willing mockingbirds. And then you're able to say, well, you know, look, my opponent's guilty. And you're able to muddy the waters in such a way that nobody can ever know what's true. Watch down hospitals and the rest of it. So they don't want them to see that contrast, so they focus on something else. And it's a diversionary tactic. It's a self-fulfilling problem. You demonize, and then you, it, we call it the wrap-up smear. If you want to talk politics, you call it the wrap-up smear. You smear somebody with falsehoods and all the rest, and then you merchandise it. And then you write it, and they'll say, see, it's reported in the press that this, 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 and this so they have that validation that the press reported the smear, and then it's called the wrap-up smear. Now I'm going to merchandise the press's report on the smear that we made. And it's, it's a tactic, and it's, it's, it's self-evident. But I think I'm worth the trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, Nancy Pelosi just explained there the entire operation here against Donald Trump. They are guilty of colluding with Russia. That's where the dossier comes from. The dossier comes from Russian disinformation to try and rig an election. That's quite literally the Steele dossier is based on Russian disinformation. It's based on Russian agents. They were the ones coordinating with Russia to try and smear, slander their opponent. They were the ones colluding with Russia. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills, but it's true. Also, in engaging with Donald Trump, and here we go, FBI Russia, FBI official who helped launch Trump-Russia probe sentenced for four years in prison for working with Russian oligarch. There it is. Here you go. 
You want your... I, I don't even need to present evidence. The headlines write themselves. The FBI official that launched the Trump pressure probe sentenced for colluding with Russia. It writes itself. It's so bloody obvious what's going on. It gets worse. It always gets worse. Ladies and gentlemen, when Joe Biden and Barack Obama held a meeting, and it's very important that Joe Biden was part of this meeting because this is all part of a wrap-up. Joe Biden's entire presidency is part of a wrap-up. Wrap-up for what they, the, sc- the scams they were all running in Ukraine, both the Romneys and the Bidens and the Clintons. They were all using Ukraine as their own honeypot. Like they were like picking apples over there. Ukraine was a slush fund for our elites. They staged a coup in 2014 in Ukraine, the CIA did. And then our elites swooped in to grab the spoils of that coup. And Zelensky to this very day is blackmailing. And this is what he's doing. He's blackmailing the American elites. That's why you just saw another $100 billion signed off for in the Senate to go to Ukraine. It's quite literally mafia blackmail. Zelensky has all the evidence, all the information. And I pray to God, I don't I don't pray for Zelensky. Okay, I got to tell you, that guy's evil. But, you know, what do they say about the company of thieves, right? No honor among thieves. I hope that that guy goes... When he's finally seeing the, when he's finally seeing um, the end, right? Whatever that may be, ousted by his own people, whatever. I hope he releases everything. Just have it all out. Like we can take, we can handle the truth. Just, just publish it all. What were the Bidens doing? What were the Romneys doing? What were the Clintons doing? What was everyone doing? They were all like using Ukraine as their own little money pot. Every corrupt deal under the sun. Donald Trump was impeached for simply asking these questions. And all gets back to the very root is that Donald Trump wasn't in on the scam. All of these scams. And what's the biggest one? The biggest scam of all. This is bigger than Watergate. Bigger than any scandal in American history. Is that a sitting president ordered his opponent to be spied on by our own intelligence agencies. And they complied. They said, yeah, they didn't say, good God, man. We're going to report you. You need to go to Guantanamo Bay. We're going to put you in prison for asking us this. They dutifully marched to those orders. Barack Obama was the outgoing president. He had no power. But he was able to order on December 5th, 2017, after Donald Trump was president-elect, he had a meeting with Joe Biden, and he ordered John Brennan and his intel heads to spy on Trump. That is what Barack Obama did. It is a horrific crime. He must be prosecuted for this crime. And more importantly, this is very, 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 very valuable to understand. This is what is definitionally called seditious conspiracy. This is an insurrection. This is quite literally by definition, insurrection, because the definition of insurrection and seditious conspiracy is you are trying to take power from those rightfully elected, Donald Trump, rightfully, lawfully, legally elected in 2016. This is Barack Obama using weaponized agencies to strip him of power. And hot damn, that they did. Because talk to anybody that worked in the Trump administration. I. No, so many people that work in the Trump administration, people that work in the Trump administration work at this company. Like the black cloud of Russia collusion that hung over all their heads, the kneecapping of that administration. And Donald Trump should get two more terms because they were able to effectively destroy or eliminate or so harm his first term in office that I'm not sure it should even count for a term. And they did this through seditious conspiracy. And so remember the wrap-up smear, that's what they have to accuse MAGA of. Their sins, they must accuse us of. If they colluded with Russia, they have to accuse Donald Trump of colluding with Russia. They are literally guilty of the sin, so they must accuse their enemy of the same thing they're doing. Merchandise it to the press, and then wrap it all up. 
They are guilty of seditious conspiracy and insurrection. Do not miss that point. Let it ring like a bell in your head. They are the seditious conspiracy theorists. They are the insurrectionists. This is the act of insurrection definitionally. And also, Barack Obama was doing this from a position of power where he actually had the power to do it. And he was doing it to his political enemy who was taking power from him. That's insurrection. So what do they have to do? At about the same time, almost the exact same time during Donald Trump's departure of the White House, they were able to manufacture their own insurrection, seditious conspiracy, to sl slander, smear Trump with. The wrap-up smear. It's so perfect. Rings like a bell, ladies and gentlemen. And so this is why they raided Trump's Mar-a-Lago. They needed to get these documents. They needed to find that binder that exposes everything, ladies and gentlemen. This is the greatest conspiracy and the greatest government scandal of our time. Thankfully, it is getting the air and the attention that it deserves, okay? Here's Jesse Waters from last night talking to the man who broke this story, explaining the story. It was really important to see in context. Let's go. Brand new details about how Obama's CIA targeted Trump and started the entire Russia hoax. For years, we were told that tips from an Australian diplomat tipped off the FBI after a random conversation with Papadopoulos, a no-name 20-something. But according to new reporting by Michael Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi, the whole thing was a CIA setup. Former CIA director John Brennan identified 26 Trump associates to be targeted by the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. And then those interactions were the targets and were targeted by the FBI as suspicious. And that's how the FBI launched the Russia collusion hoax. The details of this entire operation have been stored in a top secret binder in a secret room in Washington. Trump ordered the whole thing declassified. And now the rumor is that the binder might be missing. Michael, explain how this all started with the CIA picking these 26 Trump people. Yeah, good to be with you, Jesse. Well, obviously, this is an extremely serious story and serious allegation by multiple credible sources that Public and Racket, that's Matt Tybee's uh, publication, have spoken to. These are people that are close to the House intelligence investigation of how the Russia collusion hoax began. The story, as you mentioned, was that, oh, we were just informed by foreign intelligence about this. Our sources tell us a very different story, which is that this was initiated by the U.S. government. It came from within the U.S. government's intelligence community, including the CIA, that they asked the so-called Five Eyes Nations intelligence agencies, that's the other English-speaking nations, including Britain and Australia, to spy on 26 Trump associates, or at least they had a list of the 26 associates that were identified. This is new information. Some people have theorized about this and speculated about it. Uh, we feel very confident that our sources were in a position to know and are very credible in this report. And it's obviously a very serious allegation because this is illegal spying and it's illegal election interference. Trump interfered in an election. Trump's an insurrectionist. Trump's guilty of seditious conspiracy. Donald Trump colluded with Russia. Every one of those crimes has been exposed as something that Barack Obama ordered. All of them that Hillary Clinton and her campaign engaged in and paid for and has never had to suffer any penalties for it. When I tell you that this election is a referendum on a group of people that believe that they are gods, blasphemously believe that they are gods and that they can get away with anything and they can violate you, your constitution, your rights, desecrate your nation. I am not being superfluous. To his great credit, man, we do not give this man credit enough. Donald Trump has been calling this out from a thousand yards away. Didn't have to, could have let it slide 
could have just gone along like every other president with the intel agencies tell him to do? Invade Iraq. Hey, Bush, invade Iraq. You know, we, the CIA, facilitated bringing the 9-11 hijackers in here, but invade Iraq and invade Afghanistan. It's really smart. But did Iraq take down the World Trade Center? Doesn't matter. Just do it. Did, did Afghanistan have anything to do with the September 11th attacks? You know what? It'll look, it'll look strong. It'll look good. We want to put some Air Force bases there that we'll totally abandon in 20 years and give it to the Chinese who have kind of the state that we actually want. A super police security state. So we like, we love the Chinese for that reason. Guys, Donald Trump could have just done what every other president does and said, okay, I'm scared of you people. But that's not the way Trump does business. A look back, ladies and gentlemen, very quick flashback of Donald Trump being so right about all of this in spite of the pressure from the owned and operated intelligence organs pushing back on him. Unbelievable, the clarity of these clips when you see them in historic context, watch. So the biggest scandal was when they spied on my campaign. They spied on my well, campaign, There's Leslie. no real evidence of that. Of course there is, no. it's all over the place. Leslie, Sir, they spied on my campaign and they got I, caught. Can I say something? You know, this is 60 Minutes. And we can't put on things we can't no, verify. No, you won't put it on because it's bad for Biden. We can't Look, put on things we can't verify. Leslie, they spied and, on my campaign. Well, we can't verify It's been that. totally verified. No. It's been, just go down and get the papers. They spied on my campaign, they got caught. No. And then they went much further than that, and they got caught. And you will see that, Leslie, and you know that, but you just don't want to no. put it on the air. No, as a matter of fact, I don't know that. Donald Trump shared this meme. At, at around the time of that clip. This is Barack Obama, of course, spying on Donald Trump. But much like everything that Donald Trump does, there are subtleties to it and different layers of meaning. This clip, I didn't know quite what to make of it. When Donald Trump first said this, we have it in the documents. Oh, wh what do you mean exactly? Have a listen. We have it documented we have it in texts we have it in all sorts of forms they knew about it it was a terrible thing should have never happened and should never be allowed to happen again to a president this should never happen again this was a setup like we've never seen i think it's the political crime of the century and they've been caught so let's see what happens to them all thank you very much thank you thank you but in the documents we have it in the texts have you ever seen any texts about donald trump being spied on have you seen any documents? Apparently, according to the report, all of these documents, texts, and all the information about this was delivered to Donald Trump in a binder. Donald Trump saw it, read it, and knew about the entire scheme, knew every actor in the scheme, and tried and was successful at declassifying it, which is his plenary right as president. He declassified this document and then it whoosh, gone. And then Donald Trump's house gets raided, looking for a very specific document. They even went through Melania's unmentionables, looking for a very specific binder. They would never tell you what it was. They took all of Donald Trump's papers and chucked them on the floor. You, you remember the photos. Threw them on the floor looking for a very specific thing. They wouldn't tell us what they were looking for, and this is exactly what they were looking for. They are desperate to hoover that missing binder back up because that is the bombshell of the century, ladies and gentlemen, and it will rip open the eyes of even the most ardent blue anon, we call them, believers in Democrat propaganda. Michael Schellenberger, who considers himself a Democrat, the independent journalist who broke the story, uh, said, this is exactly what these raids are all about. Watch. There has been widespread speculation that this binder was the was the reason or a reason for the FBI raid of Mar-a-Lago. And we'll be discussing that tomorrow. But obviously, if this binder contains what we have been told that it contains, which may include raw intelligence, information showing that the U.S. government, the CIA and the intelligence community of the U.S. government initiated 
the Russia collusion hoax, that it did not occur in the way that the official story, including the Durham investigation, had portrayed it, then that's extremely serious information. And it may be if the FBI then went to go get it in order to continue the cover up of this information, that obviously adds an even more dramatic wrinkle to this. Again, we'll have more to say about it tomorrow, but this is a huge, huge story. I mean, I can't uh, I've been thinking about it in the history of the United States of America. Have we ever had something like this where the intelligence community was weaponized against a political candidate and weapon and using our foreign allies to do it? I, I can't think of a more important or dramatic story. Yeah. So, of course, the missing binder story is 100 percent real. You know that because the intel agencies have gone to their willful mouthpieces and stenographers to have them mule bitch and moan and scream about it. Watch. Why is this significant to the American people? So this this binder that was brought to the White House contained raw intelligence that the U.S. and its NATO allies collected on Russia's efforts to meddle in the 2016 election, including sources and methods, which were some of the most sensitive information in the intelligence world. So what we're talking about here is the underlying intelligence that formed the basis of the U.S. government's assessment that Russian President Vladimir Putin sought to help Trump win the 2016 election. And the disappearance of this binder was so alarming to the intelligence Thank officials you, that, according to our sources. They briefed Senate Intelligence Committee leadership about the situation last year. Now, we're told by one U.S. official familiar with the matter that this was not among the classified items that were found in last year's search of Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort, and it wasn't why the FBI searched Trump's residence. But wait, 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 wait. Okay. Unbelievable here. So this binder is proof that they spied on Trump. Yet the organs of the intel agencies, like the little dutiful reporters on CNN, mockingbirds saying, whoa, whoa uh, saying this is very important NATO information about Russia's attempts to interfere in the 2016 election. The wrap up smear. Remember, just look at it through the prism, reverse it, put that thing down, flip it and reverse it. This is the truth. They were caught. This is them using their agencies and intel operational partners in Europe to spy on Trump. It's the exact opposite. The exact opposite. There's somebody who's been calling this out who knows exactly what was in this binder. He's been on our show. He's been a friend of our show. And he has been singing this tune for ye years, actually. He told us what was going to happen before the Mar-a-Lago raid. ALX and I, Executive producer A. Last night, still a ga still literally gaping, gapping, gasping, that like Cash Patel came on the show and straight up just told us the Mar-a-Lago raid was going to happen. Incredible! If there's one man you should listen to here, it's Cash Patel, the guy who was in charge of Donald Trump's intelligence uh, agencies. Okay, the guy who was in charge, like chief of staff of the Pentagon. Have a listen. Well, the current FBI director, Chris Wray, was the FBI director when we ran the Russiagate investigation, and he had the opportunity then to expose all the corruption at the FBI, and he failed, and he's been covering up since. Look, we said since the beginning, we got out 60 percent of the documents for the Russiagate investigation. Forty percent remained. President Trump declassified those specific documents, and this entire raid on his house, I believe, was to prevent the disclosure now that the government gangsters are back in charge of their corrupt activities from Russiagate on down, because now that they have an open FBI counterintelligence investigation, they will shield any re uh, redact any release of documents because they will say we have an open investigation. Congress has a lot of work to do, and I'm glad whistleblowers are coming forward. They need to be doing so uh, in droves. Ladies and gentlemen, Congress does have a lot of work to do. That's why we are proud to be joined by one of our favorite members of Congress, somebody who is deeply knowledgeable about these facts, somebody who has endorsed Donald Trump. And somebody who is coming to Congress with a very, very fresh perspective about how duplicitous our government can be and how much they actually do lie to the American people. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna. Congresswoman, thank you for joining us. Um, we just can't believe how much our government lies to us and how much the true insurrectionists and the true seditious conspirators 
were the ones in the meeting in December the 15th at the White House 2017 with Barack Obama and Joe Biden when they said start spying on Trump. Remarkable. And we haven't yet gotten to the bottom of it. I mean, I'm not surprised. You know, when I first got into office, remember, we told them that we wanted to really see what evidence was coming out of the January 6th committee. We find out later that all of those uh, documents, as well as some of the transcripts, um, even electronic devices, has gone missing and or destroyed. I want to just also personal, personally note that I ha am having my office reach out to the chairman of House Intelligence, Turner, to see if they have any more information on that binder. But this has been something that when you really shine a light on it, you know, previous to 2016, we didn't have the media that we have now with social media and really using X platform to share that information. So there's this consolidated power that really existed in Washington. So the American people would be told one thing on the news when really in reality, something else was happening behind closed doors. But because of this transparency, we're seeing that this is really changing. And that's why you're seeing so much of this information really hit the American people, but also why we are able to, from a legislative perspective, conduct and really expose some of the things that we've been exposing. Why would why would Congress, why would any sane member of Congress ever fund these agencies ever again after looking at the evidence here? You know, I think that there's a lot of people that want to just get back to the way that things were done in regards to the quote unquote institution. But what I can tell you is when you see things come up like FISA reauthorization and you see that judiciary was fighting with House Intelligence saying, you know, just the bare minimums we need is to have something like a warrant. You know, you can't just illegally surveillance and spy on the American people. Uh, and then you see the pushback that exists. I think not only does it show that there is an ideology change in the conference in regards to what the Republican party will stand for and what it's becoming, which is uh, increasingly more America first, more of that Trumpism, almost populism vibe versus how things were conducted in the past. And I think that it's important for people to know. So when we have these discussions and these debates, you're actually seeing people say, hey, I don't want my representative to vote for that. They call the offices and people might not think that that works, but it does. Yeah, it is truly effective. And you were finally able to impeach Mayorkas, for instance, because <laughs> of tactics like this, right? Congratulations. Yeah. And I, th I think, you know, I wanted the American people to know, and I have been trying to use my social media to update people. You know, sometimes there's parliamentary procedures that occur to where we can keep these bills alive. But, you know, I told people last week we had the votes. We are short by one. Remember, we have the smallest majority in Congress since the early 1900s, especially with uh, George Santos being removed and now obviously losing that special election and then another member leaving. So, you know, it's important that we conduct those whip checks, which is counting the votes prior. But again, you saw that Steve Scalise came back and, and we were able to impeach him. So we are really excited about this tweet that you sent out this morning, talking about pigs flying um, <laughs> before more money will go to Ukraine. Um, the Ukraine operation is cl like clearly something that is being run to enrich our elites and also, of course, to give m unaccountable mountains of cash to some of the most evil people on earth, people that ban the Christian church, people that kill American journalists. Why would we ever reward the goons and goblins that do such horrible acts? Like, why would we give them a hundred billion more dollars? I, I, I've been questioning that since I got here. And you know, Benny, when I first got here and said that I wasn't for Ukraine funding, you would swear that I had, you know, 10 heads and I was the, the boogeyman. These people kind of looked at me like I was the crazy freshman from Florida. But what we are increasingly seeing is Ukraine fatigue, because the fact is, is that for the delegations that have gone there, uh, like myself, for example, and I think I told you this in a personal conversation, but I was on a delegation to Poland. I met with the Ukrainian parliament. I met with the speaker of the Ukrainian parliament, and they told me not only did they demand and F-35s, which first of all, Ukraine's not a member of NATO, okay? But secondly, they were saying that they were going to take all of the equipment that we were giving them, I'm talking about small arms, the Abrams battle and all that, and create a private mercenary army similar to the Wagner Group. Okay, the Wagner Group is not a good thing, right? They're basically an assassin squad. And that's something that, you know, NATO countries and the U.S. tax dollars should be going towards, not to mention that we're also funding Ukrainian pensions right now when we can't even get our own homeless veterans off the streets and we have an open border. So I do think that it's not uh, a surprise to me that this is happening, especially being that, you know, members of the Ukrainian government, I'm sure, knew about what was happening at Burisma and about the public corruption that we're finding that yeah, Biden sure. really was responsible for, you know, personally enriching his family off of. Do you believe that there's blackmail going on where Zelensky has this information and this evidence of the American elites and their families, Romney, Biden's, the Clintons, using Ukraine as a money pot and that he is blackmailing 
that information and holding it over the heads of some of our American elites. I don't know. You will fund, you'll fund me. I don't necessarily know that it's blackmail that's being hidden because to my knowledge, you know, when the FBI handed us a redacted document and then we later on found out that, you know, they had sources that were alleging that there's going to be 10% for the big guy. And the reason why Hunter Biden was being paid was for protection from his then father, who's the vice president, AKA Joe Biden. Um, I think that that's kind of public knowledge. I wouldn't necessarily know that it's blackmail, but what I will say is that they definitely anticipated that the old guard of what the Uniparty was in Washington, which was was the pro war caucus um, would probably fund this, you know, never ending war. And I would basically think that maybe they thought it was going to be the next Vietnam, right? We, we were just going to continue to shell money. But what you're seeing now is there has been a turnover and there's a lot of members that are stepping down and or leaving office this cycle. I mean, I think that it's probably a very large number. Uh, I don't think that it's normal to have that many people leaving. I think it's because they don't want to deal with the fighting up here. But what I will tell you is that there's some great candidates around the country running. And hopefully if we get those people elected, we can stop it. And to Mike Johnson's credit, we are not going to be voting on more funding for Ukraine. That's awesome. So that's not going to happen. He's not going to. Yeah, to my knowledge. Yeah, to my knowledge. On it. Yeah. I hope that there's a vote on your bill mandating frontline duty <laughs> in Ukraine for members of Congress supporting Schumer's $60 billion proposal. This is like one of the best pe written pieces of legislation uh, mm -hmm. because the <laughs> it really does seem like the, the the decisions that are made in Washington don't they affect all the rest of us. And they never affect the people that are voting for them. That's a real bad thing. And this would really. I think this would really make it stick, Congresswoman. I, I agree. You know, Benny, I actually had not even introduced this bill yet, and it went out on something called a listserv to get other members of Congress to sign off on, and someone actually leaked it to the Daily Mail in, I guess, an, an attempt to screw me over. And it clearly didn't work. And I'm not going to make an apology for this. The fact is, is that these people have, some of them have never served. Some of them don't have family in the service. And yet they will advocate for our troops, our sons and daughters to go and fight these wars that really we shouldn't have anything to do with, especially right now with what's happening in our country with the deficit. And really, you know, I get ticked off because to my knowledge, I don't see any calls for peace. We should be out there yes. brokering peace talks, not war talks. And it's interesting, you know, I'm going to be co-sponsoring some legislation that just came out where I think uh, members of Congress shouldn't be allowed to trade stocks in in uh, in war, war profiteering companies. These are like such broad scale approved ideas, right? Like it is amazing. Like I, I, I have no doubt that like younger leftists would probably vote for you because they're like, yeah, we shouldn't have corruption in, in government and people that vote for war should have to send their own kids to fight those wars. They should be in the front lines, right? No fortunate son right here. Exactly. And, it, and it really does seem like what's being created here is a new populist movement. And I just want to get your thoughts on that. In closing, you're, ha you have, you're having a massive growth. My, my producer really wants me to touch on this. You've passed hundreds of thousands of followers on your social media, you are a rising star. It seems like these populist ideas are bringing in an entirely different new wing into the party um, and are very, very pop, like populism is popular. I, I agree with that. And I think that having a lens and perspective of, you know, I'm a, a representative, I'm not up here, you know, acting like I'm in the King's court. And I think just having that common sense approach and really listening to what your constituents want makes a difference. You know, Benny, I think I've told you this, but like, I don't want to be up here forever. I think that it's actually toxic to be up here for so long because you really lose sight of what you're fighting for. But mm -hmm. I think the more new people we can get elected to office and the more people that are outside of this Washington bubble, um, I think that that's better for the country. And so I'll just leave on a positive note, you know, when I first got up here, you saw they tried to really take me out in the media. Uh, you saw yes. what happened with the Washington Post. Later on, it was investigated. Time Magazine made me one of the top 100 most influential people in the world. And I think that as far as that's concerned, if you tell the truth, if you're really fighting for what you believe in, I think you can really change the country. And so that's what we're here doing. God's doing an incredible work in you and Godspeed to you. We are praying for you. And you got the Benny Brigade at your back. Thank you, Benny. Here's the X account one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Rep Luna, make sure that you follow 100,000 and one people. Can't be wrong. Make sure that we are supporting our fellow patriots as the fight has, quite frankly, never been more perilous. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we continue and we march on. There are so many like different 
fascinating stories that are happening right now. And, and like you know, the impeachment vote obviously was last night uh, with Mayorkas wanted to sort of, I guess, like put a bow on that. If you want to talk about actual treason to the nation, it's a nice little, nice little through line here. Um, Mayorkas has been impeached by the House. Does the Senate have to take up the articles of impeachment? No, sadly, they don't. This is the first time that a cabinet member has been impeached, however, in 150 years. So it's a big black spot and is also a leverage point for Republicans. So you better take up, like, why haven't you taken up the uh, Mayorkas impeachment? Let's have a trial in the Senate. Because the trial is actually where these people are able to be publicly humiliated and disgraced. Would the Senate vote to impeach Mayorkas? They should. Is there, is there anything more treasonous than this? This is evidence enough. Joe Biden, it's amazing how if you have a chronological knowledge of what these people have said and what they've done, it is the only superpower on this show. And so much of it emanates from our excellent executive producer, the great ALX AI. Please follow ALX on X. Uh, they, Elon Musk was so impressed when he met ALX, he named Twitter after him. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have this like deep and abiding knowledge of clips and what these people have said, and we are able to hold their feet to the fire. Here is Joe Biden in the year 2015, explaining precisely what he was going to do to America. When evil people show you who they are, believe them. And look who's sitting right next to Biden. Watch. Fox, an unrelenting stream of immigration, nonstop, nonstop. Folks like me who were Caucasian of European descent for the first time in 2017 will be in an absolute minority in the United States of America. Absolute minority. Fewer than 50 percent of the people in America from then and on will be white European stock. That's not a bad thing. That's a, that's a source of our strength. Look at May Mayorkas. We call him Gollum on this program. I need a Gollum. I need a face swap. Gollum and Mayorkas. Somebody please work on that. Jerry, I'm looking at you. Look at me. Did you see Mayorkas sitting there looking at Joe Biden? Like, like, you see why I call him Gollum? Joe Biden's sitting there, like, telling us what their plan is. The plan is very simple. And this is why the guy needed to be impeached. Somebody needed to have, something bad needed to happen. Like, something needed to happen. Plan. Import as many people as humanly possible from third world, people that don't speak English, people that will absolutely swell our welfare roles, Clower Piven, two communist sociologists, designed this plan in the 60s. Joe Biden learned about this plan in the 60s when he was a young leftist, and now Joe Biden is implementing that plan. Swell the welfare roles, create a new political underclass, be the elites in charge of, the, of, in charge of that political underclass by giving them handouts, by giving them government goodies. They will continue to perpetually vote for government goodies and they will vote for you. Either way, it's mail-in votes, right? So you can just go out and harvest them. So bring in 30 million people from the third world, create a new political underclass, give those people full citizenship rights and voting rights as soon as possible, as soon as you possibly can. Create 30 million more new Democrat voters Never have to worry about the needs of Americans ever again, because you'll never be able to, you'll never be able to break that block. That block for an entire generation will vote Democrat policies because they're getting the goodies until, of course, the treasury runs completely and totally dry until the American dollars worth utterly nothing. They are a suicide pact. I mean, I'm telling you, the modern day Democrat Party are a suicide cult. They do not give a shit about you, your future, your children's future. They care only about the temporal power of the exact moment right now. And that is why Barack Obama, worst president that ever lived, one of them, on his way out the door, remember Barack Obama clapping arms and like smiling with Donald Trump, knowing full well that he had ordered the kneecapping and sabotage of Donald Trump's administration illegally. They don't care. Joe Biden the, and Alejandro Mayorkas, time and time again, the border secure, border secure. They don't care. It's a suicide pact. If they can't run this country permanently, forever, with impunity, 
and without any w w without anyone stopping them if they can't run at all then they'll destroy it they'll burn it to the ground the spoiled petulant child in the Willy Wonka uh movie right i want it now i want the world i want the whole world and if she can't have it she'll start ripping everything up that is who these people are at this exact moment Barack Obama knew what he had done. And here they are. These goblins. These slithering snakes. Knowing that they had a dagger directly in the back of this man. Michelle Obama not, not hugging. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was almost, it was worth it for the gram though. Gotta tell you. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we learned a lot about the grams inside of uh, Hunter Biden's laptop, cell phone, body over the last uh, 24 hours. Amazing. This was going to be our lead of the show. And then all this news breaks. And what can you do? Tight news cycle. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be live early. A reminder, we're going to be live early for Donald Trump appearing at the Fannie Willis, at Big Fannie's spanking. Donald Trump will be giving a pounding to Big Fanny tomorrow, live. We're going to broadcast it. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Too much news to cover. But yesterday, Tony Bobulinski was up in Congress giving a behind-closed-door testimony. What did he say? Tony Bobulinski said that Joe Biden was the brand and that Joe Biden was buffering a complex scheme to maintain plausible deniability and that Joe Biden was, of course, the big man. Ladies and gentlemen, the Joe Biden corruption story is just heating up just in time for the 2024 cycle to heat up. Here's the takeaway news. This interview began around 10 o'clock this morning and is expected to go a few more hours. Republicans are praising Tony Bobulinski. Democrats say his credibility is non-existent. He tries to link Joe Biden and the president, but then provides no evidence. So there is actually zero evidence in his opening statement that links the president. Now, Tony Bobulinski says he's uniquely qualified to talk about what he calls Joe Biden's involvement in Hunter Biden's business deals. He worked with the president's son to create a joint venture with Chinese energy company CEFC. Bobulinski says he met with Joe Biden, then a former VP in 2017. He says he provided text messages that prove he met Joe Biden in May 2017, two times after Joe Biden left the vice presidency. Bobulinski says he texted the president's brother Jim in this text obtained by Fox News Digital. Bob Alinsky texted Jim Biden, great to meet you and spend some time together. Please thank Joe for his time. It was great to talk. Thanks, Tony B. The investigation into Hunter Biden has broadened out into an impeachment investigation of his dad, the president. It will culminate really over the next two weeks, Martha. Next week, the president's brother, Jim Biden, will come and answer questions behind closed doors. Then after that, Hunter Biden at the end of the month. Baby, it's going to get worse. ALX. Robbie, let's get into the rotation. I want Jamie Comer on the show. I want Jim Jordan on the show. This is going to heat up. They've been telling us it's about to heat up. James Comer yesterday saying what he learned from the Bobulinski interview. Let's take it away. Well, we learned a lot, uh, and Tony Bobulinski handled himself very well. I've never seen Democrats or anyone act worse in a deposition than they did. Uh, the Democrats couldn't handle the truth, and that's what Tony Bobulinski delivered today. He delivered the truth. He talked about Joe's involvement. He talked about the numerous times he talked to Joe Biden. Uh, he mentioned that Joe Biden thanked him for uh, what he was doing uh, with his brother and his, his son. So Joe Biden knew very well the role Tony Bobulinski was playing in the in the, the Biden orbit. And he talked about what CEF, CEFC was. And I think every American would be concerned if they could understand exactly what CEFC was trying to do. They were trying to implement their Belt and Road Initiative in the United States. Everything that we have bipartisan agreement on in Congress uh, to prevent China from doing in the United States, CEFC was, was trying to acquire the services of the Bidens to be able to remove the barriers of entry into our market. So Joe Biden was working for the Chinese. He was the brand. Tony Bobulinski is the second person on record under oath to testify that Joe Biden was the brand.
it's going to get worse. It's kind of why they had to do this whole old man routine for the special counsel, Robert Hur. It, it all kind of makes sense. They have to try and they have to choose one. They have to choose one. So is Joe Biden like the dementia guy or is he the criminal mastermind? And they can't seem to figure it out. And it's going to be really, really exciting. Hunter Biden getting his subpoena and his testimony locked in. Joe Biden's brother getting his subpoena and his testimony locked in. Be prepared. Okay. Got a bunch of congressional sources telling us be prepared. This is all going to start spinning out of control. The intel agencies, obviously not pleased with Joe Biden, are going to be like pretty angry at him being unable to pass more black box funding for Ukraine. A lot of backstabbing going on, a lot of rats fleeing the ship, a lot of people saying Joe Biden's a goner. And this, an amazing story we do not have time to get to this morning, but all the NATO countries, out of the blue, all the NATO countries are like saying how much they're donating, how much they're giving their national budgets to, to NATO. You'll recall that Donald Trump's big thing is that all the NATO countries are defrauding America because America's the only people who pays their dues. So all the European countries essentially get to create social welfare slush funds inside their own little European microcosm, and America just pays for their defense. Donald Trump's big thing was banging the gavel that you don't get free rides anymore. And now, lo and behold, the NATO countries are all hedging that of the almost a surety of Donald Trump's election victory in 2024. I don't say, I don't get out and vote, obviously, right? But got a lot of work to do. Very scary, some of these results you're seeing around the country. But Donald Trump is going to kick Joe Biden's ass in a fair fight. And we must work and endeavor for that fair fight. And so now all the NATO countries are all like shockingly like walking lockstep with what Trump wants them to do before Trump's even president. As the resident is still in the White House. Ooh, baby. It's amazing. You'll be seeing again, once again, ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump tomorrow in the courthouse with Fannie Willis. The official on-camera spanking for Big Fanny. It'll start around 9.30. We'll be starting early. We want to cover this as a live event. We want to give commentary. We have a bunch of <laughs> very surprised and interesting guests that are will be planned to come on the show. And uh, we think it'll be wildly entertaining. It will be solid gold. For made for TV entertainment, politics, and culture, which is what this show thrives on. This show also actually thrives on actual solid gold. I have actually invested in gold. I invest in gold through my friends at Allegiance Gold. The reason why I do this is because, well, as we have covered, the Senate is ready to spend a hundred billion more dollars to foreign governments. Not a penny for our border, a hundred billion dollars to protect the borders of Israel, Taiwan, Ukraine, Nothing for our border. Nothing for us. They are going to print the dollar out of existence. There are existential threats to the dollar. The BRICS system is one of them. And that BRICS system is dependent upon gold. It's going to be a gold-backed currency. So the gold is the, the, the currency is actually worth something. Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time to invest in gold. Now is the time to simply diversify a little bit. And you should do so with my friends at Allegiance Gold. Go to protectwithmenny.com today. Protectwithmenny.com today. Call 844-66-BENNY. Right now, get up to $5,000 in free silver with a qualifying purchase. Protectwithmenny.com today. A couple things. One, this is what Alejandro Mayorkas looks like as Gollum. Our team is just really good. That is a huge jowl. That is big, jowly Gollum. And that's actually way too much hair on his head, in fact. But, Jerry, well done. Well done, Jerry. Number two, uh, for brigade members, Kate, my wife, and I have made a special Valentine's Day video for you, uh, answering some of your questions that will be up. Benny Johnson slash brigade, just exclusive content for brigade members. Today, we're going to be doing a lot more of that. We have, uh, this is sort of what it looks like. It is our Valentine's Day Q&A. You asked questions. And we answer all of them. You're going to love some of these answers, actually. And, uh, well, you'll see what true love looks like in our special Valentine's Day Q&A. 
exclusive for Brigade members. One of the many exclusive offerings that you get access to when you join the Benny Brigade. You can join today on our website, bennyjohnson.com slash brigade. You can sign up for the price of a happy meal per month, and you would make us happy because that keeps us independent, free on the show to talk about the intel agencies, to speak about the unspeakable evils uh, of our federal government, to be able to do the journalism and the reporting that we do here is made 100% possible by you. And we say thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for that. Tough times. And if you can't afford that, I get it. I know what it's like to be dead broke. I understand. The best that I could possibly give to you is to speak the truth, however, to say thank you for simply watching the show anyway, and to give you some uplifting, which regardless of the darkness of the show, I mean, we started the show talking about <laughs> how did 9-11 come about? It's a pretty dark show, actually. We give you uplifting, and every single show is called our verse of the day. This verse from Romans 8.18. For I consider that suffering of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed to us. The suffering of this present time, as you watch what they're doing to Trump, as you watch what they're doing to the nation, as you watch what they're doing to our legal system, our border, our currency, American culture itself, whatever precious thing that used to be, can be restored. Maybe it isn't restored in this life, but it could be. What does God say to the people inside of Sodom and Gomorrah? God says, find me one. Find me one righteous person. One person who uh, has their eyes set on the glory that is to be revealed to us. When God brings about his final just judgment. If you find me one righteous man, one righteous woman, then I'll save the entire place. God says of Sodom and Gomorrah. Are we living in Sodom and Gomorrah right now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could do another 17 hours on the evils of our government and the evils of the people, the monsters, the godless monsters that run it, that actually think that they're gods, which is, quite frankly, the source of all evil throughout eternity. Throughout all mankind, the source of all evil was men believing that they are gods. Nope! God is God. Jesus Christ is God's son, ladies and gentlemen. And through the Holy Spirit, they can guide our lives, and as simple, humble Christians... We are to listen. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the word of God for the day. Don't even worry about your sufferings today. Focus on the glory ahead. That is why we march forward, and I march with you. I'm fighting right alongside you. It's your boy, Benny, and this is The Benny Show. See ya.